Hey Channel 9 community, my name's Dave Strabel, Cloud Technical Specialist for Microsoft. You can reach me on Twitter at hybridcloud underscore guy. So today I want to take some time to talk about Docker for Windows. So what is Docker for Windows? Well, Docker for Windows provides a faster and more reliable experience. There's no more VirtualBox or boot to Docker that we have to install. The Docker engine is running in an Alpine Linux distribution on Hyper-V that is enabled on your Windows 10 client machine. Docker for Windows is a Windows application, so it includes a native user interface and auto-update capabilities. The Docker toolset comes bundled with it, so you get Docker Compose, you get Docker Command Line, Docker Notary, all out of the box. It also allows you to do volume mapping for your code and data. So volume data access works correctly, including file change notifications. This really enables faster edit test cycles for in-container development. You'll also have really easy access to running containers on the local host network, as the Docker for Windows includes a DNS server for containers, which is integrated with the Windows networking stack. So what do we need uh, before we get started? Well, we're going to need Windows 10 64-bit uh, with at least 1511 November update. We'll also need Hyper-V enabled and Hyper-V PowerShell modules enabled. The install package for Docker for Windows will actually enable Hyper-V and Hyper-V PowerShell modules when it installs. So let's get our hands dirty with the demo. So the first thing we're going to need to do to get started is go to the download for Docker for Windows. You'll see the URL up in the left hand corner here. You'll go then to download Docker for Windows. And once that's done downloading, just go and install the MSI. It'll go through the install of it and enable Hyper-V or the Hyper-V modules if they need to be enabled. Once you have that, you'll then have Docker for Windows icon on your desktop. So we'll open that up. And what you'll see is down in your system tray here, you'll have this little whale. And it'll show that it's trying to start up. This can take a minute or two on the first initialization of it. Uh, once that's up and running, you'll be able to go into the settings here. So in the settings, we got a couple different things here that we can change. So by default, it actually has this check the automatically start Docker when you log in. I typically leave this unchecked because it can take up a lot of memory. Uh, but if you're actively developing and running containers on your client machine, then you may want to have that uh, start whenever you log in. You can also share out your local drives to containers here. You can also change what resources are allocated to the Docker engine. So I leave this at the default, but if you have more advanced configurations or you're running a lot of containers on your client machine, then you may want to bump that up some. So we'll close out of the settings here. And we'll go into a PowerShell prompt here. And the first thing we want to do is run a Docker info. So Docker info is going to give us information about our Docker host. So here you can see we have zero containers and zero images. It's going to give us a version number. This should at least be 1.12. The RC number may be different depending on when you downloaded this. It'll also give you some information of what operating system it's running on. As you can see, we are running on that Alpine Linux. Also, what resources are allocated to it. The next thing I want to show here is to see if we have any run, we noticed that we had zero running containers. So if you ever want to check that, you can do a docker ps-a. This will show you all your running containers. As you can see, we have none. So what we're going to first do is run a container here. So we can check out that our configuration is good. So we'll do a docker run hello world. 
And what this does, it's going to look for this hello world image locally. And it sees that it can't find it, so it goes out to Docker Hub, pulls this image down, and this is just a test image that Docker's built out there. So Docker Hub allows you to publish and consume images from a hosted solution from Docker. So these images may be from different vendors. They may be uh, from different community members that publish those images. So let's do something a little more interesting here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and actually run a Docker image that is a Ubuntu image. And we'll actually uh, get a bash shell with that. So we'll do a Docker run it. This will attach us to that actual container Ubuntu bash. You'll see it can't, it'll first look locally if you have that image. If not, it will go out to Docker Hub and pull that image down for you. The nice thing about this, once it's actually downloaded this image into your local repository, then you don't have to go out to the internet to download this and get it from Docker Hub. So it starts extracting that image, and then it's going to run that image in a container. And as you can see down here, I'm actually root in this container and you can see I'm no longer in my client. This is the Ubuntu container that I'm actually in now. So let's go ahead and exit out of this. So once we exit, let's go ahead and look at what running containers that we do have on this machine now. So we'll do the docker ps-a and you'll see that we have the Ubuntu container running and also the hello world container running. So let's look at something that's actually more useful, like running a web server. So to run this, we're going to run an Nginx container. So we're going to do a docker run dash D. So the dash D will run this as a background process. And then we're going to map the ports. So a dash P is going to allow you to map the ports. So we're going to map our local port 80 to port 80 on the container. And then let's give it a name of web server. And we're going to pull that Nginx. So we're pulling that Nginx container. We map the ports for that to run on. And we're going to run this container. It's going to go look. We don't have it locally. It's going to go out to Docker Hub pull down what it needs from there. So it's going to pull that latest Nginx container image. Once that does download, it's then going to run that container and we'll have a live web server up. So we have that image now running. We'll do a docker ps again dash a so we can see all the containers running here and you'll see we have our nginx container right here and we can see that those ports have been mapped on this local host here so we're going to copy that and we'll open up a web browser here uh, so let's go to that ip address as you can see we go to our local ip address here and now we have a working web server so as you can see, Docker for Windows really provides a very easy way to get started with Docker. It also gives you a nice native interface, so you're no longer installing multiple components to get this working. So thank you, Channel 9 community, for joining. And next week, we'll be talking about more about Docker with advanced configurations. Thank you.